What is up, it's Figure Hunter, and today we're gonna do a training load workout analysis comparison for the Balance 2 and the Helio Strap, the Maze Fit system relative to Garmin, relative to what Garmin is offering because it all looks the same, it just doesn't have the same results, in my opinion. So we're gonna compare side by side a few workouts from the AmazeFit system, whether it's the Helio strap and the Balance 2, because they've both been tracking, auto tracking on the, um, before I send out my final review, the training load as a, another feature. Now, if you are curious about these devices, I've got a bunch of little subset reviews of different pieces of their offering. Heart rate accuracy, um, the biocharger, the wellness and recovery, the biocharge itself on the Helio strap, the wellness and recovery on the Balance 2. Um, all links in the description below. So watch the subset reviews. This is the final subset I'm gonna do before doing the final review. So we're just gonna look at a few workouts side by side with Garmin because a lot of the features look the same, but to me, I, it, it gives an indication of how I feel about the training load analysis or the training analysis workout to workout and what value I get there. Second to that, it gives me sort of a feel for how I feel about the training load tracking across the board and how I feel about it there. So with that, let's look at side by side a few workouts as well as the training load analysis or the training analysis from each device and then talk about it at the end. Okay, so we see the two, we have the ZEP system and then the Garmin system. So we're just gonna take a few workouts um, over the last little bit of time and just sort of compare what I see or what I feel between the two workouts. And we'll go into other, so we'll take the workout from today it was lifting in the first portion and then some intense uh, intervals in the second portion. So it looks great. Now this was connected to a chest strap, so it's the exact replica of the heart rate. And then you go into the training effect for one versus the other. So the aerobic training effect here was very similar on the Garmin relative to the training effect on the ZEP, uh, on the Balance 2. Um, but the anaerobic was just really high, really high relative to what I felt like it was. Um, it did have some anabolic work, anaer aerobic work, um, but, you know, four minute intervals, I, I feel like the Garmin is correct and the anaerobic training effect is over evaluated here on the ZEP system. And so then we go here. Now I can only tell you because it's not listed here within the Garmin system, what the, um, training load, or I'm sorry, not what the training load was, but the recovery time was. But here we can see that the recovery time, I'm bad, I'm going to different places because it's sort of scattered across the ZEP system. The recovery time is 34 hours. It was like 23 hours on the Garmin. So the recovery time looks just to be too long. And a lot of times I'm finding a high training load relative to the Garmin's like 120 training load on the balance two or the and the MaceFit system's like 200. And so I'm getting this really high training load over a course of a period of time. We'll look at that a little bit more specifically in just a little bit. So now we're gonna go into a workout for the 22nd, which was another sort of lifting and then cardiovascular work. Um, so same heart rate graph. This is the same on both devices, both connected to a chest strap. And you see the training effect here from the Garmin and the training effect from the Balance 2 or the AmazeFit system. It's the same result on the Helio strap, just really, really high. That's just too high on the aerobic training effect and way too high on the anaerobic. Um, so it was just a lot of lifting and then two sort of, I think it was six minute interval work, but it's just coming in high again. And the, the worst part about this was that the recovery time from the AmazeFit was 41 hours and it was like 23 or 24 on the Garmin, which was much more spot on. So, and it, the training load itself was higher. So then we're gonna go to July 21st and July 21st here. So it's a cardio workout, July 21st. The the, the calories are all looking good. Um, so this is just, was just like 65 minutes, I think. Yeah, 65 minutes of just rowing, actually rotating between ski erg, uh, salt bike and rowing and just keeping a steady state heart rate. And then we see again on the training effect, that's really pretty spot on from the Garmin. It was just low level zone two, and it gave me 1.6 on the Garmin aerobic and no anaerobic. And then uh, training effect is just a little bit high 
the aerobic training effect on the amazed fit system. So again, what I feel every time is that the aerobic training effects a little bit high and the anaerobic is too high in general. Um, so now we're going to go to the training status, which would be a similar way of evaluating load when it compares to the load that you would see with the amazed fit system. So we got to go workouts. It's just, a few different things buried around. And we're going to look at two different things because in Maysville, I have training load, which will show this over time. And it just, it's just not quite as useful, but you can see that it is still showing I'm 479, which is optimal versus 817. So it's like twice that. So again, that's how I'm finding it. It's giving me scores that are twice that. Now in relative terms, you can see that it looks very similar on those last seven days because this is just a seven day graph. It looks similar to how it is tracking so it's okay. It just feels like it's over evaluating every workout to workout. And then the second thing that a Mace fit offers, so the training load, I just feel like I don't look at that number. It's the one that's on the watch. I don't really track it to see what my training load looks like because it doesn't have a graph on the watch. It just has a number and that number seems arbitrary in the universe of numbers. It just is like there. Maybe over time, if this is the only device I had, it would get better. And then the other thing that AmazeFit does well is this. And so that's to summarize before I go into this last piece, that's, that's how it looks when it comes training load versus training load. I feel like you have a lot of value when it comes to the Garmin training load tracking versus the actual training load itself on the AmazeFit system. It doesn't have as much value or doesn't offer as much felt benefit. And then the recovery time is always seems too high. So we're going to turn this guy off. So now just looking at the last piece is the exertion piece. So the, in the exertion aspects of this, you can see fatigue level, which is your seven day workout load versus your fitness level, which is your like 38 or 28 day load. And then you see below that your training status. So if you're negative, that means you're pushing your fitness higher. You're working harder. You're getting your body to a fitter state. I actually think this is great. This is actually worthwhile stuff, but where is it? Let's take a look. Let's go back to the beginning. So if we go back to the overview here, now on the workout tab, you have your training load recovery time, but it's not there. On the workout tab, you have your history of workouts, but it's not there. You go to the exertion tab, and then you look over today's activities, and you look over today's suggestions, and then you'll see the exertion statistics, what other systems call the training stress score uh, training stress evaluation. And it's worthwhile. It's just buried off and aside. I think this should be front and center. I feel like this of all the training load, like, I, I, and generally I feel like the training load output of the amazement system is not worthwhile. So this, you can go into this guy and you can see him over a course of time where your fitness is being called higher, the blue line versus the red line. This is of value. It's just buried into a further away state. And you can see balanced optimal and there's other states above this. You can see balanced and optimal. There's other states if I was to push it high or go hard um, and you can track across time. I don't know why it doesn't bring in or it's not bringing in the numbers for each of those fatigue levels or fitness levels because the numbers are there. It's just not showing here. Um, I just think this is, this is way too buried into the back tab on the bottom for it to offer value, but that's how I feel workout to workout over evaluation, in my opinion of the aerobic training effect, slightly over, over evaluation of the aerobic, definite over evaluation of anaerobic load scores too high, but maybe that's a relative what to one another the recovery time too high. And then the training load, not of value in the one piece, the exertion statistics of value needs to be more front and center. Okay, so what do I think of the training load in full summary? When I look at it, so let's just take the workouts. The workouts on the workout analysis, I do like and find somewhat useful the aerobic training effect. I'm finding the aerobic training effect evaluation at the end of every workout to be as close to the Garmin offering as it could be. I mean, it's closer than any of the other metrics. I'll say that, it's the closest of the metrics in general. The anaerobic training effect, always too high from what I feel or what I actually believe to be true physiologically. Um, the recovery time and the training load, the score, 
too hot. Um, it is taking workouts now that it's been with me for a multiple of weeks and multiple workouts. It's, it's not, it's too high of a training load and really too high of a recovery time workout to workout. So when I look at the summary of all the wellness analysis features on the AmazeFit system, I feel like the aerobic training effect has some value, anaerobic does not, and the training load a little value in the recovery time, some value, but I just feel like it's overshooting it. So it kind of feels like maybe I also, maybe it's also not worthwhile because it's overshooting it. So now let's talk about the training load, the evaluation of your workout success across a span of time. Two features there, the training load feature, which shows you your volume of, of work over the last seven days, your total score, your training load score. And that, that has some value, you can see it over time. It can be viewed as all relative if it's just giving you a bigger score, an inflated score, at least it's relative and it stays the same. Or, you know, you're gonna see some, how much load you had this week, even if the scores are just higher than they should be. But it makes me feel a little bit like it's not as trustworthy. And you know what I think about the training load? I just don't look at it because I don't feel like it has any uh, empirical value. No, that's not the word. It doesn't have any like directionable value. It's just a number. So at the end of the day, the training load, which is what you see on the watch, you don't see the training stress score on the watch. What you see on the watch is not a value. And then the recovery time is just a little too high. So it kind of feels like, man, I don't really look at that. I definitely don't look at the training load. So at the end of the day, it's not really there. It's not really worthwhile. And then the training stress score. I like what they're doing there. I think that is great. I feel like that is something I love from the Sunto system, something from other systems, other apps that offer that. I feel like that is great. Your short-term rigor compared to your long-term rigor, what you can fitness, your fitness level can handle versus the fatigue you're putting onto your body right now. I feel like it's worthwhile. They're just not pulling it together. They're not pulling it together in a way. So when I look at it, I just, it's sort of it's shoved off to the side and then down below in this one section over here. I think that should be actually more in the front section. That should be somewhere front and center. But as it's shoved in the back over off to the side, it doesn't offer as much value to me and I don't really look at it. But I do think if I own this device, this only device to own, that's where I would look. That's where I would track. I'd ignore the training load. So maybe that's the summary. So when I look at it compared to the competitive world today, I feel like it's just lacking because it's got all these features that just don't feel worthwhile or trustworthy. When there's other devices that do, like Koros has got like the world's most advanced. Sunto, Sunto watches will have the training stress score and a more feature element, and they have all this coaching that goes with your, your training for that week. A whole coaching tab. Polar does the same thing, but it, Polar's a little more one-dimensional, but it still gives you a simple chart to follow at the primary forefront of your training. And this just sort of buries the good stuff away and anything else is just sort of not really doesn't feel trustworthy. So that's my final review for the training load, like the workout analysis, what I feel about the workout analysis, as well as what I feel about the recommendations of looking at your workout life across a span of time. They just, they're still falling short. They fell short more considerably in the past when I reviewed them. They're still falling short. It's still just got a lot of room to, to add. Um, it's better, but it just leaves me for like, ugh, just not quite there. So the training load aspects, workout to workout, as well as the cross span of time, is just not fully there. And that's my final review for the training load aspects for the AmazeFit family of devices. It's the Figure Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.